Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. Today we are going to be continuing our everyday watercolor journal journey and we are going to be painting chickens. So chickens were mentioned in an earlier video and people got really excited to paint chickens. So uh, I am bringing them to you today on day 10 of this series. We are going to keep this very simple and very loose for our sketchbooks or our journals. And we're really going to be looking at just the shape and the form of a chicken. And we'll be adding some texture with some loose brush strokes. But a great way to start to get to know a subject, especially if it's new to you, is to break it down into some simple um, shapes to start to figure out how this thing is put together, especially with animals or big landscapes and things like that. So let's talk about chickens. Now, my very first commission uh, was five chickens. I don't know if you know this, but chickens come in a multitude of varieties and not just different types of chickens like they lay different eggs or whatever, but they look really, really different. So if you Google like different types of chickens, you are going to come up with a huge variety of colors, patterns, shapes, look and feel, the whole nine yards. We're going to keep this simple and we're going to do a basic illustrative kind of chicken and they all have relatively the same components. So I'm going to draw out very lightly sketch. You don't have to sketch these before you paint, but you can um, just the components of a chicken. So first it has um, usually, so usually a chicken kind of follows this S curve. So head, body, tail. Okay. So you can see if you look on the side, it kind of looks like the letter S. So we're going to follow keeping that in mind and looking at a chicken in profile or on the side, we are going to kind of paint the basic shape of a chicken. So we first start with the head, which, you know, looks kind of like a, a thumb or just a big long gumdrop. And you have to leave space here for the beak, um, like the eye will go here and the beak will be out here. But overall, it's this kind of cone shaped piece. And then connected to that will be the body, which is really just kind of an egg shape. So if you draw in an egg shape so it's easy to remember chickens lay eggs but the body is like an egg shape on its side and of course there's going to be variation in this and how it connects um, how big or fat or wide or narrow or skinny um, it is will depend on the variety of chicken and then it has the tail structure and this is where things vary a lot with chickens they can be really big and have big plumes of feathers or they can be kind of short and truncated we're just going to do a little short kind of truncated one right now for this one right here um, and then uh, for the legs they have these like stick legs but before we get to that a lot of them will have feathers that kind of come down around the legs uh, so they might be these little cone shaped, almost like pantaloons that come down around part of the that stick shaped leg. And then the legs always come out, or almost always, at an angle like this. They have really weird joints, our lovely chickens. Um, and they'll have little claws on them. We're just going to draw in three. Often the claws are always going to have um, one that comes out the back. The opposite direction of the two that kind of go forward so you don't we're not going to get too into detail on legs and all of that so there are our legs so egg shape cone shape little truncated tail shape and then for the eye the eye just kind of sits here at the top and then the beak also can vary quite a bit depending on the type of chicken um, but it'll usually have the little jowl, the red jowl things here. So some scoop, scoop, a little slightly curved beak, 
and then depending on the variety again the nice comb at the top the red comb and we'll just keep this one kind of small here so that is a drawing of our chicken I wasn't planning on drawing out a whole chicken but there you go I wanted to show you the components and then how you vary these components by making them wider or narrower adding bigger plumes of feathers making this longer and wider bigger combs bigger jowls smaller combs will help you differentiate the variety of chicken and also how you put the patterns on or what colors you use we're going to keep things kind of simple gray white red um, and keep it in that illustrative kind of mindset for our journal and practicing i'm just lightening up all of these lines here i'm going to use a size six princeton velvet touch brush um, a size six round um, I have my clean water here. I also have a size four or a detail brush you might want for the beak and the eye. Um, I did figure out what type of journal this is. I finally just broke down and really looked and went and Googled the, um, the brand. So I'll put the link in the description to an actual one of these. Some folks really liked this brand. Um, here it is. Uh, Tumor, I think it's pronounced Tumorta. I might be totally wrong. Oh, sorry. There you go. T-U-M-U-A-R-T-A. -A. It's 25% cotton. You can get one on Amazon. They're very reasonable. They're very similar. I would equate the paper to Strathmore, which is a very popular brand, although it might have a little more cotton in it than some of the Strathmores. Um, some of the kind of student grade Strathmore papers. So a lot of people were asking about it. There you go. I, I wouldn't, I recommend it. It's working great for me right now. My personal favorite journals that I just don't have one at the moment, but I have two on the way, um, are the Baohong, which there's links in the descriptions for those as well. Baohong watercolor journals. They're a hundred percent cotton paper. Um, I absolutely love those. Um, and also Etcher. I've found Etcher to be a really good, um, journal as well. Okay, so let's get into painting our chicken. So I'm going to use, uh, you could use a neutral tint or Payne's gray. I have some Payne's gray here. I'm just going to water it down. And then I also have um, some raw sienna, which is like a brownish color. I'm just going to take some of that and water it down as well, just to add some variation but really, really light colors because our chicken, I want her to look a little like more on the white side. So I am going to start um, just at the top, adding in some color and then using my brush to go in the direction of the feathers. So the feathers um, from the head down usually travel down kind of this way. You can see they kind of come to a collar right here and you can leave some white space or areas. And then um, along the back, often the feathers will kind of come around the back this way, especially like where the tail meets, they go in a different direction. And then underneath, Scoop these up this way. Again, leaving some white space. I'm going to come in with some of that raw sienna. And then for my feathers on the end here, I'm going to use my brush kind of in this direction that the feathers would travel. And now we're going to add in some darker color to accentuate some of these things. And then a feather like or a wing would be somewhere in here so it'd probably be a little darker under the wing but they often blend in you don't have like a hard hard line usually usually like some kind of shadow deep shadow here that kind of helps accentuate where the wing would be all right so let's take some more of those two colors and just start to 
while this is still wet, add in some darker shadowed areas. I'm going to put some along the collar. That's a little too dark. Kind of where these feathers meet the body. And under the neck, I'll leave the top. And in a sketchbook for something like this, this is great because you can paint like several versions of this. Um, you can make them smaller and paint a bunch of versions of and playing with your textures and your colors, dropping in wet on wet. Again, I'm trying to keep this pretty loose. I'm gonna do some darker color at the base here. Blend, blend, blend. I just like adding in this warm color. Chickens are dirty, even the white ones. <laughs> they have these browns and whites and grays. Okay. I think I am pretty much done messing with the body. Let's put in the face and the eye and the legs. Oh, I didn't do our pantaloons down here, our little feathered legs. And I'm gonna make those a little darker because they're underneath, they're towards the ground. They'll definitely be a little dirtier and in shadow. All right, and now I'm going to get a dark brown. Any dark brown color you have will do or if you want to make a dark brown. But I'm going to put in the legs. Drop in a little darker color here. Around that collar. All right, so we're going to let that dry and then I'm going to put in the beak the comb and the part around the mouth and the eyeball. All right, our little chickie is dry. I'm gonna pick up some red. I have a cadmium red here. Put in the little comb. I definitely like leaving in the comb some white, kind of in some interior areas. I think it just, helps it pop, it brings a lot of contrast. Same with the little jowls down here. That's not what they're called, but that's all I can think of to call them right now. Rinse off my brush. Often the red does kind of go up around the eye a bit. But again, go Google those images of chickens for inspiration. And then I'm gonna take some yellow. I have my warm dyrolide yellow. Paint in my beak. You can put in detail later, of like a hard line of a dark color. And we'll use Payne's Gray for the eye. I am gonna leave, you can make it all black. You can leave a little catch light in there, a little highlight. And then you can use that Payne's Gray to add in any details. Like if you wanna put in the curve or the shape of the beak, or you can do that with a pen, with a Micron pen. There we go. There's our pretty chicken. So you can repeat that over and over again. 
you can continue to play and add more details, making it less of a loose chicken and more defined, whatever you want. So if you want to add in more feather details, if you want to go in with an ink and wash, so you could use a micron pen to add more details um, and texture. I'm just adding it with Payne's Gray and this liner brush right now. And this is very, you know, illustrative, rough, loose, lots of fun. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Now you can do this same process with all kinds of different colors, shapes, patterns, work on those tail feathers. Let's just show you some tail feathers really quick if you want to stick around for tail feathers. So if I were to take this same shape and body and want to create these big kind of plumy tail feathers, all it does is really change the shape. Let's do these in, actually no. I will do another video later on with more of a rooster that has these big plumy tail feathers and a really big, lots of color and vibrance. How about that? Um, but we're gonna leave the chicken this way. And don't forget to check out the description for links to supplies and materials like the sketchbook, my paints, my brushes, um, as well as uh, following me on social media. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share with a friend. Um, leave a comment. I love to hear your comments. Uh, but thank you for joining me on day 10 of our watercolor journey. Um, everyday watercolor journal ideas. And I hope you stick with me for the remainder of this series, however long we go. But I'm going to keep on going for quite some time. Thanks, y'all. Happy painting.